What is going on guys? It's Marco here from Marco's Tech Talk and today I'm pretty excited because I finally got my hands on a really nice shape MacBook. This is a mid-2010 MacBook. Um, it's in great shape. It's the polycarbonate one. I think this is actually the last iteration of the polycarbonate one before they discontinued this and went to the last generation um, of MacBooks, the ones that was the ones that were like really skinny, like 12 inch ones. I think they were like passively cooled. Um, but this was, in my opinion, like one of the coolest ones ever. I don't know why, but I just, I really like it because it was just like an upgrade of the old school polycarbonate one, like the 2006 ones, like that, that generation. I have one of those too. I just, just got to find it again. Um, but this is when it was a unibody uh, plastic situation, which was really cool. It had the nice keyboard style of the MacBook Pro, um, except it was not backlit. And the other really cool thing about this is, as far as I'm aware, this is actually pretty much the exact same thing as a mid-2010 MacBook Pro as far as power performance goes. Um, this does have High Sierra on it right now, and it does actually have a 2.4 gigahertz Core 2 Duo in it. Um, we'll go ahead and zoom this in a little bit so you guys can see it a little bit better. Um, it does have a, a 2.4 gigahertz Core 2 Duo in it, 16 gigs of DDR3, um, and a GT, I'm sorry, a GeForce 320M um, in it as well, which is pretty cool. Um, it's got an SSD in it as well now, um, which uh, I'll show you guys how how to change it out in this too, along with the RAM just after this. Um, but it's really awesome, this thing. Using it compared to that mid-2010 MacBook Pro I made a video of, or I made a couple of videos of now, I guess, on the channel, um, it really feels the same. Uh, it really does. I mean, just using it a little bit, they're both running High Sierra. Um, really, the only difference between this and the MacBook Pro, from my understanding, is obviously it's not made out of aluminum. It's made out of plastic. Obviously, there's no backlit keyboard. But um, the other, the only other thing I'm aware of that it doesn't have that the MacBook Pro had was the FireWire um, 800. It looks like we only have, actually we don't have any FireWire at all, whereas the Pro had FireWire 800, which I think, oh, and the SD card slot too, this doesn't have. Um, but that's really it. If you guys are looking for something that's definitely cheaper, I mean, this can be found for like 100 bucks, something like that. I think I got this one for like $80 um, in this kind of shape. So... If you want something that's cheaper than a MacBook Pro and you don't care about FireWire SD card slot and the back of the keyboard doesn't bother you or anything like that, I'd recommend getting one of these. These are awesome computers still. Sure, they only run High Sierra natively, um, you know, as the max supported OS, but um, they're still pretty good in my opinion, guys. So anyway, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and hop right into the um, SSD and RAM um, how-to on this. Alright guys, so we're going to get started by turning this thing upside down. Um, I am using the new wide angle camera on my iPhone 11 for this shot, so it's actually pretty cool that I'm able to get the whole thing in view, but literally only have it like not even a foot away, which is pretty awesome for filming. Um, so you're going to want to use a number 00 Philips. Um, here is the one I'm using. Um, it just says 00 on it. Not really sure how well this camera is going to pick it up, being that it is the, the more uh, wide angle one. But uh, anyway, it is a zero zero, so go ahead and just start taking these off. I always like to keep them organized in some way by just kind of putting them to the side, but in the order I took them off, so I know where they belong, so that's what I'm going to do. And then um, I'll just go ahead and cut to after this part, because just unscrewing stuff, you guys don't need to see that, so we'll skip ahead. All right, so at this point, I've gone ahead and removed all the screws on the bottom of the computer. So the bottom piece, panel, whatever you want to call it, comes off. Um, pretty easily. It's just a couple of snaps. I might think, yeah, that's all. Just a couple of those. You want to pull it gently, and it comes right up. Unlike the mid-2010 MacBook Pro, which this is essentially the exact same thing, um, hardware-wise, other than the missing FireWire 800 port. Um, it's pretty much the same thing. I don't think that the MacBook Pro had snaps. I can't remember, um, but this has them. So I took that off now. It's clean. Looks pretty clean underneath. Um, so it's not bad. And then let's see what else we got in here. We've got a Kingston SSD. All right, that's cool. Um, that's actually not bad. I was just trying to see if I should replace it and all that. And then looks like it's pretty clean otherwise in here, honestly. I'm pretty impressed, actually. I was looking mainly for dust in here, stuff like that. I'm not going to take it apart any more than, than this as far as checking for the cleanliness of it because I just don't want to open up the possibility of breaking something. Um, so we'll go ahead and uh, I'll show you guys how to replace the RAM real quick because we're here. All you do, um, pretty much, if I remember correctly, just like the mid-2010 MacBook Pro, 
is you just go ahead and push these little two tabs. I could zoom this in now. Um, hopefully, let's see how well. Oh, wow, that works so well. Man, this uh, these new iPhones are pretty cool. And I'll move this over a little bit for you guys. Good stuff. And maybe even see if we can get a little more zoom. All right, cool. All right, so to unlock the RAM, all you want to do is grab these little clips right here on the side. Um, you just push them out. And then just releases that. And you just pull this one out gently. And then set that aside. And then to get the next one out, it's a little bit harder because it's got like a second set of locks that you can't really see. It's got to kind of push this out again. Releases it. Then you have to gently kind of like push up on this while also kind of sort of like trying to overcome these little tabs with your fingers, I guess. Um, it's kind of hard to explain. You just have to kind of feel it. Um, and then that comes out too. So I can't zoom this any more than it is, but the little, the little extra clips are like right in here. It's like a little extra tab that you can't really see on camera that, that ends up grabbing the uh, second one. So you want to just watch out for that. Um, so yeah, now I'm just going to go ahead and put these back in. I'm not changing them, but um, I'm just going to just took them out to show you guys how simple it is. And if you're looking for a video that shows you that, this one should be able to help you out. I'm just going to put it back in by placing that in the lower slot, pushing down so it locks. And then the top one as well, we're going to go ahead and place that in there. And then push it down so it locks. That's it. Alrighty guys, now I'll show you guys how to remove the SSD and uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty, so removing the SSD is pretty simple. All you need is that same double zero Phillips that you used to open up the computer. And then all you want to do is locate these two little Phillips right here, this one and this one. You go ahead and just unscrew those. They're captive, so you don't have to worry about putting them anywhere and getting them confused with something else you're working on. I'll be pretty careful though not to slip and hit the motherboard because that would be a bad day. And once that's totally loose, you grab this little uh, little bracket thing here. And then you want to keep the orientation correct. So remember that the little um, like hump that these orange things are on, I guess, kind of protrudes um, towards the hard drive. So keep that in mind. And then from here, all you do is just pull up this little tab and then that releases it. And then be very careful. There's this incredibly delicate um, SATA cable here. But yeah, I'll show you in just a second. Just gotta pull these out. All right, and after much frustration, I was able to get that out. You gotta be very gentle with it though, because if you break it, you need to get a new one. But that looks pretty easy to change because it looks like it's just one more screw and then this. So it doesn't look like, if you do break that, it's not that hard to go and change it past that point. All right, so just like the mid-2010 MacBook Pro and Mac Mini, this has the same little like holder things on the side um, that you have to unscrew and put on your new hard drive. There's four of them. They're gonna be a T5 Torx. That's what I have that fits best in them, so. But um, I'm not gonna go ahead and change this though because uh, like I said, this already has an SSD in it that I'm happy with. I just mainly wanted to check on the cleanliness of this computer to make sure it was uh, nice to continue using and it shouldn't like overheat or anything like that. So um, we could just pretend that this is a new drive that we've swapped these little guys over on. All we do at this point is just pop this back in, this cable, get it lined up, and then push that in, and that's that. And then you want to put the hard drive in first uh, this way, get it lined up in the little holes in there, and then place it down there so it sits on the two little orange things. And then put this back on. And then we'll screw that back down with the double zero Phillips. All right, so now we'll go ahead and put the little fuzzy white uh, back cover back on it. So all we do is take it, place it back down, and then it should kind of snap in, but uh, not really, I guess. It's just, it doesn't really snap, it just kind of holds it. You kind of feel it grab. There's nothing audible really to it. Um, and yeah, so then you just want to screw it back in. And um, you're all done, guys. So I appreciate you watching the video. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Um, definitely have some more content coming up soon. Uh, mostly Apple-related right now, but uh, that's kind of the kick I'm on, so to speak. I've got a lot of Apple stuff I'm working on. Um, but I do hope to get some other stuff going sooner or later. I'm just, like I said, I'm working on this right now. So guys, remember to subscribe to the channel. And uh, definitely have some more content out soon, guys. Thanks a lot for watching.